while Patsy's working on her on her computer. So I agree with you. I've only known Patsy for a little bit and she is always coming from contribution and helping people all the time. Um, and that is, you know, what, what Patsy said at the beginning is watching her family have that persistence of the deals falling apart. We've got a problem solved. We show up for our clients. We do the hard things. We do what it takes. I mean, what a great, um, you know, I, I think role models to be around, but, and certainly, you know, Patsy displays that in her day to day on top of that, just coming from contribution and wanting to always help. I think the combination of those things is critical. So what are you guys doing to come from contribution always and, and find solutions and help people and just put yourself out there to build those relationships and be the person that people look to, to go, you know what, I can always go to Becky or to Karen or to Patsy or to whoever, because it seems like even if they don't know the answer, they're going to help me figure it out. Or they're willing to take my call. They're willing to help me and problem solve with me. Just by being that person, you know, those that's what attracts people to you over time. Whether or not it's now or later doesn't really matter because you're really, um, you know, living out your purpose of being your best version and helping people along the way. So, Patsy, can you hear us okay? I can joining in the other computer. Okay, perfect. And it sounds like your audio is pretty good right now. Maybe it was just your internet at that time, but I'll let you in on this one as well. And so for those of you that are watching, oh, there we go. We got to get one muted. Oh, there we go. Here she comes back. Awesome. Hi, Patsy. <laughs> nice to see you. Can you hear me fine now? Oh, yes, it's perfect. Sounds wonderful. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> no worries. Um, no worries at all. So um, for those of you watching live in EXP Family Tree, make sure that you post any comments or questions. I'll monitor that for Patsy. We'll leave a little bit of time at the end for questions. And for those of you watching on YouTube, of course, if you have any questions, you know how to reach us. Um, and we are super excited to be talking to Patsy. Um, Patsy, how do I say your last name? Because I feel like I'm going to butcher it, even though I speak Spanish. Yeah. Arriaga. Arriaga. I knew it. Um, okay, perfect. Um, and so um, she is in North Carolina. Uh, we were just talking about all the successes that she had in Puerto Rico, moved it to North Carolina 15 years ago. Is that right, Patsy? That is correct. Yeah. And has grown a real estate business successfully since. So fast forward to today. Uh, tell us a little bit about what your real estate business looks like. Why did you bring it to EXP Realty and uh, what have you been able to do differently because you did? Oh my God. So after I worked for the bigger traditional companies, then I was a, an indie for six years. Uh, but I found myself like I was an island. Um, I, no matter how hard I worked, I couldn't break the, the take home that I had because I needed more leverage and you know, to get more leverage, I would need to get more employees and that costs a lot of money. So, you know, um, and for example, I would see signs um, in billboards, uh, you know, we, we list our house or we buy within certain days. And I'm like, gosh, I need to be able to provide my agents with, with all these opportunities. Um, I can't keep just thinking small. So after like two years, I guess I'm one of those that thought this long and hard, of thinking, why would I give anything out of my commission to a company? Because uh, I was at 100%. Uh, one day I realized I'm not going to grow if I have that mentality. And uh, my good friend Karen had talked to me, um, talked to me, and she didn't really sell me EXP, just she had a big smile and she answered all the questions for me. And she was just so genuine and honest that I said, gosh, what is the worst thing that can happen? The worst thing that can happen is that I come in. I don't like it. And then I just leave it. But I will always regret things I don't try. Mm -hmm. I don't try to do. So I wanted to better myself, wanted to better my team, wanted to grow my team. And to I'm very OCD about compliance. So imagine all this paperwork, more agents. Uh, it was a little bit um, uh, stressful, to say the least, to, to think about adding more agents without the leverage. So one day, one Friday evening, I just joined EXP. And on Monday, I told my team and I said, I really hope you guys follow me. I have to do this for my family. And all of the agents, they joined and they're still here. No one has left. Wow. And how long ago was that, Patsy? That was two years ago in March. Wow. Two years in March. Yeah. So what do you think? So, um, and I hear this often for broker owners, independent broker owners, that's what Patsy was prior to coming to EXP. You know, there, 
more agents doing more production means more paperwork, more compliance. Mm -hmm. You need to bring more value. So you got to figure out who's going to do it. If you don't hire somebody, that means you have to do it. Mm -hmm. If it's important to you to make sure that you're compliant and you're staying out of trouble, then it's going to be overwhelming because more isn't necessarily better, but you need Mm -hmm. more in order to actually make a profit as an independent broker owner, right? So it's this vicious cycle of feeling like I need to grow more, but I don't want to grow more because here's why. And I think a lot of independent broker owners are feeling that way today, particularly because it's an interesting real estate climate. They've got to keep their people out of trouble. They've got to keep their people in production. And they really do need to be recruiting more people to stay alive. But oftentimes they don't have the bandwidth to do it, but they don't, they think they're giving up money because Patsy just said this. I had, I was keeping all my money. I was at hundred percent. I was the owner. That's the initial thought process because you're already in a little bit of a scarcity mindset at that time as a broker Mm -hmm. owner, not really knowing it. And so what was it, Patsy, that helped you to kind of maybe overcome some of those objections in your head or that Karen helped you with or whatever the case may be? You know, it was, I wanted growth not only for me, but for the agents within my team who are my family. And it was very unfair Mm -hmm. for them to be limited by my scarcity, you know? And so I, you know, I just, I decided, listen, if this doesn't work out, then at least I tried it. Yeah. And I will tell you that within a year we had doubled our production. Okay. Uh, Still I'm learning so much from the platform, so many ways to do business Um, and, and so I, I just, I wish I would have done it a lot sooner for sure. And all all our agents are so happy. One of the best things is I've been able to bring more agents, uh, to my personal team, but I've also been able to grow my organization. So you can go, you can grow beyond your borders. Okay. And essentially have a traditional team, which is what I have in my area, but have, a team, if you will, of agents in other areas that you can refer out to. So it's like having a team because you know them, you met with them. It's really the same thing. And you can, I I actually take hot leads. We pre-qualify them and then we send them off to other cities that, you know, it's too far for us to work. Um, It could be an hour away. But honestly, you could think about doing this in all 50 states in the world. Mm -hmm. You can actually... Uh, foster those relationships and find them a really good agent that you know that you're used to working with. So um, the leverage is incredible. So, okay. So let's talk about this. When you were an independent broker owner, did you run that brokerage like a team more so, Patsy? Yes. Yes. I I run it like a team as well, but you got to understand when you run it like a team, first of all, you're extremely scared to um, tell anybody about your trade secrets. Second of all, you're limited to the amount, for example, of listings that you have, the amount of open houses that you have yes. to, to feed your agents with. You know what I'm saying? So now it's like, who has an open house in our organization? If I'm out of listing, somebody else needs help and vice versa. So we yes. all help each other. We all grow together. Yes. Perfect. So when you came on over, you made the decision, you told your agents, they all came with you. They were all excited. They're all still there. You guys have doubled your business. Do you mind talking a little bit about, did you have to change the financials a little bit in order to make that work? You don't have to go into all the detail, but these are some questions that as those of us that are talking to other broker Mm -hmm. owners, we're navigating these types of questions. So um, when you brought all your agents over, did you bring them under um, a mega or standard team to help kind of maybe offset uh, the, the, the expenses to EXP and to you, because I'm sure that was different when you were an independent coming over to EXP. Yes, that's a great question. And so when I came in, um, I came in as a traditional team. I still am a traditional team. So I'm at a $16,000 cap. My agents are $8,000 cap. Okay. And it was a little bit scary for them because now we have the team split. Plus we had the EXP split. But the way I said, listen, guys, we're going to get more business. Mm-hmm. I love to run my numbers. So, you know, we said, if we get more X more business, you're going to more than offset that difference. Okay. We did add in place, for example, uh, transaction fees and things of that nature to compensate. Uh, but really that's something that we don't even think about because we have a lot more business just being on this platform. Yes. 
So pretty easy to say if you were an independent broker owner, many do run it like a team. So make sure when you're talking to Indies, you ask this question. Some of them run it just like a brokerage agents. Just join me. Here's your split. You do your own thing. Oftentimes, though, independent brokers are really running it more like a traditional team because that's how they're actually standing themselves apart from the larger brokerages. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you know, some of those um, independents that just let agents kind of go wild are, are there's not that many of them succeeding anymore because agents are looking for things to plug into. So make sure you ask that question. What a great thing. Know your numbers. Okay, agents, if you theoretically pay $8,000 more coming mm -hmm. over to eXp, how many more transactions do we need to get a year? For most people, it's probably one. <laughs> so let's mm -hmm. just commit to them. We're going to help them get one more transaction and they're going to be back to whole with us anyways. But now they get all of these things they didn't get when that, when it was an indie. The healthcare. I mean, you know, when my husband brought his traditional team over, that alone um, saved people the amount of the cap. For, for many of them, because there was that much savings in the healthcare. So you've got to know what the tools and the opportunities are so that you can help each individual agent do their numbers, right? That's and yeah, right. and think about this, for example, when, and it happens often on a weekend, we can have so many, like this weekend, we sold like four or five homes and we were super busy. Uh, so what happens when, when you're, you, you have a couple of offers on a listing, all of a sudden two buyers that you've been working with call you, they're in town, they wanna see something. So we can leverage from the agents from our organization, they can show property for us, we pay them a fee, they get the learning experience that they need. So we have many other arms without having to necessarily put our hands in the pocket, which we were doing before, because we were just eight scrambling, you know, trying to figure out how we were, actually we were, we were fine, scrambling, trying to figure out how we were going to, to survive the weekend if somebody was gone out of town. So now we can put all these things in place. I have agents, you know, over the summer now leaving on vacation. So we just, what we are doing too, is we're bringing agents working under them that they're supervising. Uh, this morning, I was uh, interviewing an agent that that uh, is going to come under one of our uh, very, um, uh, one of our top producers. And, 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 and she's going to mentor this agent and we'll um, have him help her with showing, et cetera. Yes. I love it. So what you're doing is you're helping your agents even have more people around them. Cause here's the thing, the mm -hmm. smaller, we always think sometimes bigger, you know, is, is not better, but it actually is because there's so much more that we can, we can leverage so much more. We can take advantage of, I mean, we can take advantage of each other's listings and buyer needs to go get business for ourselves. So more is better we as a leader have to be able to learn how to articulate that. Sometimes people resist more because they like, the, you know, they like their family, they like the small close knit, but what they don't realize is they're missing a lot of opportunities. Obviously your organization has seen that since you doubled your business since coming over, you know, to EXP. So that's amazing. Okay. So now talk to us a little bit about you're still working uh, full time in your your traditional real estate team at mm -hmm. EXP, and you've now started to see this opportunity to take advantage of revenue share outside of your traditional team. You're taking mm -hmm. advantage of it inside the traditional team. I'm sure that's growing as well. But now it gives you an opportunity to talk to everybody about being in partnership with you in one way or the other because they have two options, right? Mm -hmm. So yes, talk to us about how that has worked. Yeah, the handicap that I had before was that I. First of all, I didn't have the help that I have now in compliance, et cetera, et cetera, right? And that's paid by EXP. They check all. So I've been able to go my traditional team. But also, I always had agents coming wanting to join my group, but I didn't have the bandwidth to be able to sustain that, right? So now I have the opportunity to tell them, yes, let me talk to you about EXP, you know? And they might be independent uh, rock star agents, or they might be agents that are coming out. We have one, Emma, she's fabulous. She started with us. Um, as a new agent and she's killing it, we have other rock stars that really wouldn't want to come under that survey and associates because they have their own name. So now I'm able to bring more people to our organization, to our like expanded team, if you will, because that's what we are. Right. Um, and I'm not limiting myself by just bringing them under my traditional team. So that has been huge. Yes.
Yeah. I mean, here's the deal. You can talk to everybody now and you can know that there can be an opportunity for them. Do you want to be part of our traditional team or do you want to be part of our expanded Mm -hmm. organization? Here are the benefits of either, which one is best for you. And the really cool part is when you, if you want to start on the traditional team, you don't have to stay there forever. You can rotate on and off this traditional team, however you need to, and be part of our world still. And that's Mm -hmm. what independent broker owners don't have. It's like all or nothing, one or nothing. This is it, or you don't have it. And same thing with team leaders who are in other franchise models, because it just is what it is. You either are the right fit for this or not. And if you are for a while, but then you decide to leave that traditional team, of course, we all know that then we do a lot of work to really train up our competition, where now we're training up people that are going to be part of our expanded organization and benefit all of the rest of our future people and each other forever. Yeah. And we yeah. benefit from it. That's, a, that's definitely a big thing. I mean, I tell the agents in my team, listen, if you outgrow me and you want to leave my team, I love you guys, but then you do your thing. Thing. Funny thing is they want to stay because we have such a good thing going. Right. And, 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 but also we have, um, you know, rockstar agents that uh, they came in and in the beginning they came in under, for example, one of my agents and they were afraid to talk to me because they thought we were competitors. Now we're best friends. We help each other. Hey, I have this situation. So it's just a whole different culture, a whole different way of doing business where we all grow and benefit from each other. That's amazing. So talk a little bit about, um, about just some successes, some tips, some strategies maybe that you're having when it comes to revenue share, because I do see a lot of momentum that you're having. Mm -hmm. So anything that you can share would be awesome. And then we'll open it up for some questions if you're okay with that. Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, what I did when I came into EXP is I made it public and social media and, and one agent that I had transactions with me called me and long story short, he ended up joining EXP. Well, he brought his partner and then they brought another rock star that the, the, the name of the game here is to have patience. We had, we met with this um, agent a year ago, over a year ago, and she decided to come in now. And she came in now and she brought another 13 and it just keeps expanding and expanding and expanding. So um, don't be afraid to share what you're doing on social media. That's huge because agents are looking. They're just too shy to talk. And the other thing I've learned is agents I have had really good transactions with, I'm trying to text them and not call them during the day because they might be at the office and then they are not interested, you know, because they don't want to hear anybody to hear that. Mm -hmm. So lately I have been having a lot of success just texting people and just having great transactions. Um, I'm more now just listing. I do work with a couple of buyers here and there, but I'm more on the operation side of the business right now. And so I'm always looking who's having a great transaction with another agent. And I also leverage the relationships that my agents have with other agents. And I tell them, listen, why don't you invite them to have coffee with us? Um, Because I'm also trying to grow their their, um, organization because I want everybody to do well in this business. So that's the cool thing about this. We all grow. I love it. Um, If you're not checking if you are a team leader and you aren't checking on the co-op agents that your agents are doing transactions with, I would say that would be the first thing to do. Um, but you know, even if you have a self-organized team and you have a lot of people around you locally, you can still do that as the leader of that self-organized organization. Reach out on behalf of the other agent and just say, we wanted to say thank you. We're excited that the transaction went, uh, you know, it came to fruition and you both went to a successful closing. We hope it was a smooth, uh, you know, um, transaction for you. If you have any feedback, we'd love to hear it. We're always trying to be better. Um, You know, how are you? How is your business? It doesn't have to be a traditional team to do that, right? If you've just got people that are joining you, ask them if you can do that. They're probably not doing it. And then, you know, come from a place of contribution, reach out. And if you get into a conversation with that co-op agent, bring that agent in and bless them with revenue share. And if that person decides to join, bring them under them. This is how we succeed through other people. And we build our organization through others, sometimes gifting our own people Uh, the gift of revenue share helps to get them to have the confidence to go do more of it. Mm -hmm. And I've done that quite successfully across the country. And a lot of people don't think of that, but it can be really, really valuable. Um, What has been your biggest challenge, Patsy? Uh, My biggest challenge growing my revenue share has been probably getting over the misconception that some agents in the industry have about our brokerage. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so 
the other day, for example, I, you know, texted um, an agent that I have a good relationship with, and he's like, no, that's a, and the multi-level of real estate and um, not interested. Let's talk about the benefits that my company have. And by the way, um, said something like the stock is plummeting. And I said, how much ownership do you have in your current firm? <laughs> Zero, you know? So I'm like, listen, we're all partners. We, uh, we are. We all have equity in this in this platform. We all have ways to grow in so many different ways. Like you know, like Rich says, this is like the Tesla of real estate. It's a nonlinear company. So you find your fit and you grow that way. We do a lot of relocation business, and because right now we have more leverage. Like if we have an overflow of business, we can have people that are not in our personal team, but in our organization, help show, et cetera. So we have been able to actually double our relocation business as well. Wow. Mm -hmm. So so the biggest challenge has been that, but that has also been the biggest opportunity because we meet once a month um, in our organization. We we do what's called the Talk with Titans. Uh, um, Karen had started the titans of real estate and we have kept um um we have kept it going so we meet once a month and we have a training on whatever we want to talk about and so agents bring other agents that have may have questions about the platform i'm like you know you don't have to change brokerage i just want to clarify who we are yeah and like that we have been able to also bring a lot of people and and you know just just by speaking the truth yeah. So using your relationships, building good rapport with the agents locally, and then just saying, look, I, I, I hear that you have that misconception. You understand that. Mm -hmm. I just like the opportunity to tell you what it's really like. You don't ever have to move if you don't want to, but wouldn't you rather know the truth about it in case at mm -hmm. some point you are looking to make a change versus just listening to what you think it is or adhering to some sort of myth out there about our company. Clearly at the rate that we're growing, uh, it isn't what people say it is. Otherwise there wouldn't be the growth that we're having, right? <clears throat> and I will say the biggest challenge too in the beginning was knowing who to call, mm. right? So it's super important and that has been our success lately. You got to onboard people correctly. Mm -hmm. If you give them access to work chat and workplace and the world, and what we do is we Zoom with the agent and we make sure they're all set. Uh, that's another thing we've done. All our organization communicates not via text, but we have a, a work chat group. Yeah. Okay. That way we're sending them to the platform and now they're experts at it. Yeah. And they keep adding their own peeps as well. Love it. Love it. Um, Anybody else um, have some questions? I don't want to hog the whole time. I know I've asked a lot of questions, but what haven't I asked? It looks like Grady has one. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Grady. Yeah, so uh, I'm sure Karen, all kudos to her for bringing uh, Patsy over, but I just <laughs> wanted to ask, uh, Pat, uh, Karen, did you did you do all the heavy lifting or did you have to engage anybody like Elizabeth O'Reilly or Jean Frederick or anybody to help uh, bring Patsy on board? She doesn't need anybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I, we just spent two hours on, I guess it was a Friday, Patsy, mm -hmm. on a February day, and we just talked about how hard it was to run your own office, the hard parts of it, and the things I felt like EXP takes off of our list, like compliance and referrals and bookkeeping and not writing a check on a Friday. And, you know, agents, if you own your own brokerage, they're, they're like, I closed a deal 30 minutes ago. Where's my check? And you're like, I don't have paperwork. I'm not giving you a check. And so that is one big thing that comes off your plate when you're not. And so we just talked about the tough parts about brokerage ownership and then when she got to know everybody i think she knew that this was the right decision yes okay. uh, karen did a great job of introducing me to all her friends in exp and um and and i just felt really good about it like people really had my back uh one thing i will mention when you're a team leader is you stop producing to be able to help your agents so your production comes down so if you're not making that up with volume you're on a free fall yeah. of income. 
And so, so I was always stuck in between. I, my production had come down, but I was working double the time and still didn't see the difference in the, in the bank. <laughs> yeah. And, and if you look at those uh, dollar cost averages, if you were a full-time agent that goes from being a full-time agent to a team and you go to a 50-50 split, you have to double your units to make the same income. And if you do some kind of 25% split, you have to 4X your production to do a 20, because otherwise you're giving up business for 25%. So you have to 4X that just to make mm -hmm. all things even. And then to actually grow more, you have to 5X mm -hmm. or 10, you know 10X it. Yeah. So those are thoughts that real estate brokerage owners are not thinking about as they start doing these splits that are so agent centric because you can't afford it. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's really important to leverage with our platform. Like I will, I just went to accounting this morning to get some documents to send to my uh, bookkeeper, things of that nature. I, like Karen said, writing a check on a Friday afternoon, like right now, everything is in the, in, in sky slope. I know exactly how many closings I've got in the next, you know, I mean, all the closings that I've got, exactly how much my team is getting. And so I can project, hey, we're down, we're up, this, that. It's it's all very organized. And as soon as we close and everything gets uploaded, you know, I, sometimes if, if I'm out and um, or my assistant is out, uh, I'll just text uh, the transaction coordinator in uh, EXP and she'll upload it for us and we'll settle the um, the file so the agents get get paid that same evening. I mean, that's unheard of. Mm -hmm. And then I don't have to do 1099s for the agents. So I have all this extra time now that I can use to grow my team, my organization, the business. I mean, most of us don't even think about those things if we haven't owned our own independent brokerage, because as a team leader, you don't have to do a lot of the things that Indy does. Mm -hmm. Just think about that. Just the 1099s, just the just mm -hmm. the basic accounting stuff that has to be done is a very time consuming task. And every single one of those tasks adds up to time, which means they're not going and growing or they're not going and helping their agents to retain them. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's just mm -hmm. huge value. And it's these small yeah. things that we don't think about when we're talking maybe to independent broker owners. I would tell agents, guys, you don't see the back end of my business. Like it's January and I'm trying to get 1099s for agents that have referred to us or companies and and you're out working and producing and then you start to resent the fact that you're bringing all the business they're producing you're stuck in the office and it, it just doesn't work now it's like you want to get paid we need that referral document and it goes in sky slope in two seconds it's not a problem Every, everybody gets paid on time and we're very organized you know at any point in time we can go back and check a transaction it, it's just magic I love that. And we have Keely has a question, but before that, I just want to mention something here. Um, what I what I would like for everybody to hear is you've been here for a couple of years. You're busy building your team, right? So you're working in that full time, just like everybody else is, whether they're a solo agent or a team leader on this call. And yet you've been able to go out there and build relationships with other agents. How has that changed your financial thermostat? How has that changed your financial situation? whatever you're willing to share, you don't have to go into a lot of detail, but I do think it's important to show that you've been here for five or six or eight or 10 years. You've only been here for two, but it has been a beneficial opportunity for you financially, right? Oh, a hundred percent. And so more than anything in the beginning, when I came in, it just gave me the energy and the footprint to know what I need to be doing in the next five years. Mm -hmm. uh, so I can eventually retire without having to give up my income. Um, and I enjoy helping and coaching so much that I can stay involved without having to be a technician of real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, and our agents are excited to have a pathway to retirement as well. So they're all motivated. So how has this helped me? Um, I'm my goal is to finish this year with 200 agents. I'm still not yet there. I'm reaching 100. But what I do is all the money that I get in revenue share has 
gone back to my business to be able to, um, you know, to uh, support marketing, et cetera. So it's been extremely beneficial. I actually had one of my agents um, that brought a couple of, of agents uh, under her. And, and a couple of weeks ago, she's like, um, I got a thousand dollars extra in my account. And now she's super excited about it. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, it has really, it has transformed the vision of the business. It has given me the energy to keep on going. I'm telling you. Yeah. Yeah. So at first it gives energy because if you don't have energy yeah. to keep going, you're going to start losing money anyway. So people yeah. agree about a small little loss of money to move over, but if they don't do it, they're going to lose money anyway. And so we have to tactfully figure out ways to show them that then the energy that comes gets you back excited gets you growing again and now you take advantage of growth in more than one way I mean, yeah. You, yeah multiple income streams yeah like in 18 months I mean I, last year I made it was close to 20k in in revenue share but it was I mean I've only been here two years and I we're still producing we sell close to 50 million dollars a year um, so we're busy doing this, uh, this year, I hope to finish with, you know, I hope to double that in revenue share, but it's the long term. Uh, it's the long, and it just keeps compounding. And the cool thing is that now the agents that came in under me are bringing agents. And so they're coming into my portal. I call them and greet them, but I don't know them. So it's like, people are working while I'm doing something else. I love it. That's true. Leverage. leverage success through others. It's like, yeah. not like any other place that you could ever work in real estate. I truly believe hundred percent. Keely. Hello, my friend. Hello. This is so good. Thank you both. <laughs> um, Patsy. So you are a woman who knows her numbers when you meet with agents. And that is also, that has always been something that I've struggled with. Um, Talk to us about how important that is to be able to sit there and, you know, just, just draw out the numbers and instead of being vague and yeah, you know, no, just closes that, the deal. Correct. It's, it's the first thing is if you're going to meet with an agent and I actually have one coming today at two 30. So in 45 minutes, of course you do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so the first thing, you know, I suggest is everybody, you go to your MLS. I did just get broker view and I loved it. Mm -hmm. Loved it. It's just so much easier. So, but I would just check their production and, and I know how much they've sold. And I will tell you that 98% of the agent population, even if they're top producers don't know what they sold last year and they don't even know their what they're doing this year, like their to date production. So I put it out there and I just asked them, you know, what, how much do you pay the company? What, what's the split, this, that. But I also don't want to, I do their numbers, but I don't have focus on the splits because I would have not come if it was just the split. I talked to them, listen, you're joining a humongous company where there's Mm -hmm. so many opportunities to do business and you're thinking like this like if I would not have come I would have left half my income as last year and I open up my books and I show them my numbers mm -hmm. uh so yes you go to the MLS you pull their production and most of the time when you do their numbers agents don't don't even understand how much they're paying yeah. the firm they yeah. don't but on occasion like me you may have an agent that has a really good split, okay? So if it's just for pure splits, they wouldn't come to EXP. So you really have to understand what this company has to offer. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Right, absolutely. It's yeah. a very holistic approach. Yep. Thank you. Love it. Love it. Any other questions as we round out the call, you guys, as we have Patsy on and she's an open book, so we'd love to hear you. <laughs> Anyone? You guys are quiet. I know. <laughs> Any ideas that you can give me too? Because I love to hear what other people are doing. That yeah, anybody that has something that they want to share that just kind of came to their mind in this conversation, mm -hmm. don't be shy. You know, this conversation is good for both broker owners and team leaders, because even though Patsy wasn't independent, she also ran it just like a real estate team. So if you're talking to either Indies or team leaders, a lot of the same conversation all is the same. Um, 
I will add something. So I do have an agent that will be joining and um, we're going to be opening up a, an office in Miami. So I'm super excited about it because I don't need to be licensed there. I don't have the liability. Um, so he's getting his broke because they're you're either a salesperson or a broker. So um, he's getting his broker's status and we already have the office and everything. He's already talking to agent friends. So it's so cool to be able to tell him what my experience has been so he can replicate there. Mm -hmm. Their business will be their business, but I'm still going to revenue share. And because of the connections that we make, I'm going to be able to refer out as well for a percentage. So it's like, it's growing on steroids without necessarily having to have more liability or more management of agents. Mm -hmm. Love it. Yeah. I mean, we can literally partner with people anywhere and they can choose to just open an office if they want to, to have a place to, mm -hmm. to, to sit people in and we can guide them through and help them. If you're a team leader, just, just say, I want to come from contribution and help you do what I'm doing in your area. You don't have to be a professional coach to be able to just share, share with people what you're yeah. doing. Right. I mean, I think sometimes we have limiting beliefs around who we are and then what we can do and how we can help people. We can all help each other and learn from each other. And we don't have to have, um, we don't have to think like that. We can really come from a place. If we have alignment with something, we just want to help them. Hey, let me show you what I'm doing and let's help you do it in your area. There's just no red tape and there's no barrier to entry when it comes to building different sorts of real estate teams, uh, running really um, in, in unique models, not having to do something super traditional, doing hybrid options, getting office spaces, not getting office spaces. There's so much entrepreneurship and flexibility here um, that if you find something that works for you, go find other people that might want to do what you're doing and just share it with them and see what happens. I um, will tell you, if you're a busy agent, even sitting down to write a referral was like mind boggling because you had to stop everything. Do you know there's a new referral app? Have you seen that? No. I sent a mock one yesterday to Karen just to try it out. It's awesome. It's in my EXP, like the app. And then once you go to my EXP, um, you just go to the first tile, to the top, the blue tile, and it's agent to agent referral. You can, uh, I got the background. You're not going to be able Wait, to see. There's an, there's a, my EXP app. Yes. That's where you can change your, you can look at your revenue share right on your phone. Oh my God. You didn't know that. Okay. So, so that's what I am doing. That's why I'm meeting once a month. And that has been a recipe for success to talk about anything. It's like, like, what do you guys want to talk about? Well, let me show you what I just found yes. like right now. So you go to agent to agent in my, e well, first in my EXP, you can see everything at a click of a button as, as far as revenue share is concerned, what you're getting, who's selling, who's joining, all that. But then all the quick links to anything EXP and then EXP agent to agent, literally you can send a referral in two seconds. So somebody can call me because this happens to me and I'm busy. Hey, do you know anybody in Florida? Of course I, but I got to open up my laptop. So here you, 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 what you do is you create relationships with people in other states, other places, and then you have them there. It, as long as they're EXP, you literally send out their referral. You can look up the agent's name. You put what the split is going to be for how long the referral is. And that's it. Somebody said something, Victoria, the new referral program keeps what keeps the do you want me to just say it? Yes. Yeah. So I use this quite a bit. The new referral program, what's amazing is, you know, there are agents who don't honor their referrals. Mm -hmm. So the coolest part about this is it blocks out the client's information until everyone signs. Mm -hmm. The broker signs, you sign. Oh, that's Immediately so when everyone signs, you get a follow-up email with all their information on it. And the coolest part is that referral goes straight into your SkySlope checklist. So oh, that's awesome. Yes. Yeah. And it sends the DG sign immediately. So like in two seconds, you send it out that the DG sign gets um, sent out immediately. Mm -hmm. Like literally you plug in three things. Super easy. Mm -hmm. Thank you for um, Victoria for bringing that up. That's amazing. Like if we all should be yes. using it. Yeah. It's so easy. Anything that streamlines us. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, yeah. and another thing that it does is when you go into my EXP, you have all your referrals lined up. 
Yes. And so if you forget, and sometimes you do forget, like you, you follow yeah. up with them and then it's a week later and you're like, wait, let me go back here. I'm bad at not girls. saving information. You can export them. Yes, Victoria, yeah. you're so right about that. Like if you look at my office right now, like I, I have like big, like post uh, uh, paper, like the gigantic one. And I would write stuff there for referrals because then I forget. But right now it's in my app. Like you can export all that and know who's got what. Imagine you can do a spin-off of that anywhere you have relationships with back and forth. It's amazing. So, so yeah. yeah. Everybody download the app if you don't have it. I didn't realize there was the referral piece in there. I use it for revenue share and looking at that all the time and reaching out to people because you can see all your people in there and you can click and call them right from the app. If you ever just want to be checking in on people, which is really pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, Karen. <laughs> She's like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Karen's getting the app today. I love it. We learned a lot of awesome things today. Let's utilize this. By the way, if you've got people that are um, thinking that they don't really want to stay in real estate full time, let's get them into the referral program. It's mm -hmm. much better than having them just let their licenses go inactive. They can still have a lot of access to the things of EXP, which is awesome. Stay connected to you, still receive referral money. And then when they're ready to come back in, they're still ready to come back in. They can also still um, refer people to you and build their revenue share. So it's pretty cool. Um, so as you're talking to people that might just be in different seasons of their life or with the market changing, um, you know, thinking of having to do something at least for a little while, let's, let's um, keep them in our company and continue to help us all build our business through referrals and revenue share that way. Thank you so much, Patsy, for coming on. You're definitely an inspiration. Me. I'm super excited. I hope a lot of people got amazing. takeaways. If you're talking to independent broker owners, if you're talking to team leaders, this is fantastic information. This is a testimony from someone who's been here for two years, who went through those struggles, who thought the same things and then made the change and then has had successes. So use this information. This will be out on our YouTube channel, my YouTube channel within 24 hours. If you want to share it with somebody, sometimes just share it with somebody you've been talking to and say, Hey, listen to Patsy. It sounds like she was going through a lot of what you're going through today. Then it's not you, you know, you, you, none of us want to be selling anybody on anything. We're just trying to help people, but sometimes they have to hear from other people, um, you know, to, to understand that this could be an opportunity for them too. So thank you guys so much. We'll see you next Monday. Join us for script practice, role play and making some calls. Thanks, Patsy. Thanks. Karen. Bye. Thank, thank you. Else. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.